Hello, good afternoon. My name is Ken Nardazone. Today is Saturday, September the 8th, 2018. I'm doing this YouTube video to talk about my autobiography of my landscape gardening business. I just recently retired last year after working 43 years and I decided to write a book. Here's the title, Life Gardening 43. I want to go over uh, why I wrote the book and why I think any gardener who wants to start a gardening business or even homeowners who employ gardeners, they will learn a lot about what I'm going to talk about today. First, let me uh, tell you that my first experience with gardening was when I was nine years old. I was living in Los Angeles, California at the time, and my neighbor came out and asked me if I could pull weeds out of her front yard. She said she would pay me 50 cents an hour. I agreed, worked a couple hours, and made a couple bucks. That was my first experience in gardening. My second experience was where I was living at home, my father asked me to cut the front lawn. This was back when I was about 10 years old. It would have been 1964. Back then, we just had those push reel mowers where you mow the grass and the grass flings out. That was my second experience. But when I turned 19 years old in 1974, I decided I didn't want to work for anybody. I wanted to work for myself. So I called my father up and I said, Dad, I'm starting my own gardening landscape company. Can I cut your front yard? And he said, come on over. I went ahead and mowed and edged his front and back yards. He paid me $7.50 and hired me as his gardener. So I picked up my first account, $30 a month. This was in September 1974. I was aged 19 years old. From there, I picked up a couple of accounts in the neighborhood, about three or four, and in my first month of gardening, I made $92. And from then on, I continued to build up the route month after month after month. And after one year in my rookie season, I made $10,000 and I had 35 accounts in my gardening route. How did I pick up the accounts? Just by advertising in a newspaper. Ken's Gardening, Mow and Edge, give me a call. I picked up jobs in the neighborhood while I was working. The neighbor would come over. They would refer me to their friends, relatives, siblings. And month after month, I built up the gardening business. In my book, I wrote 20 chapters starting from that first year. First year, first chapter deals with growing up and my experiences of having various jobs. I had a paper route, then I worked in a restaurant, but I decided that wasn't for me. I believe I was destined to be a self-employed landscape gardener. My second chapter, I deal with my first year in gardening, the lessons I learned. I had a success, but I also had failure. Success, I picked up jobs, got paid well. Some of the failures I had was I didn't do a good job, and as a result, I lost some accounts. So in my first chapter, I went ahead and talked about how my first year in picking up jobs, lessons learned, how to operate a business, how to keep track of my income, expenses. That's my first chapter. In my second chapter, I go on to talk about my first five years working in the city of Los Angeles and all the experiences I had. I, I, I list how many accounts I have, how much money I made. After five years, I build up the route to about 50 to 60 jobs in my route per week. And my income was about $2,500 a month. But after five years, I remember the summer of 1979, I decided 
that I don't want to work in Los Angeles anymore. It was too hot, too smoggy, and also the city is way too large. So I made the executive decision to sell my route and move to a new city. I put my ad, I put an ad in the paper listing gardening route for sale, $2,500 a month, gross income, 60 accounts. The next day, a Japanese gardener called me and asked me how much do I, does, do I want for the route. I told him I'd make $2,500 a month, give me three, three times the monthly gross, which would be $7,500. He said he would give me cash. I took it, and along with uh, all the information of the gardening route and informing my customers, I sold them the business, and I moved from Los Angeles down to San Diego, California. What was significant between the years 1974 and 1979, two things happened. I got an AA degree from a junior college, Los Angeles Pierce Junior College, and also in 1976, I married my wife, Carolyn. So in 1979, I sold the business, moved to San Diego, rented a house, and started to build up a new gardening business from scratch. I put an ad in the paper, saying, Ken's Gardening, Mullen Edge, cleanups, give me a call. After three or four months, I had acquired 30 accounts, and I was making about $2,000 a month. So I kept working at it, kept persevering, kept advertising, talking to neighbors, leaving flyers on people's doors. And after five years, I acquired 75 gardening accounts in the city of San Diego. What happened during this time also is that I attended the University of California, San Diego to finish my college degree. My major was history and I decided I want to get a college degree not only for my experience but also that would help me operate a gardening business even more successfully. So with two years of junior college, I transferred all the units to the University of California, San Diego, and I graduated in June 1981 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in history from the University of California, San Diego. The way I, I did it was I, I took classes in the morning, and then I did gardening jobs in the afternoon, probably seven or eight a day. I did that five days a week. Toward the end of 1979, I decided that Los Angeles was too hot and smoggy, but toward the end of 1984 and the beginning of 1985, I figured out that San Diego was too big. I would get jobs 20 to 25 miles away from where I lived. So I decided again for the second time to sell my gardening business. So I put an ad in the paper and I was able to find another buyer. This time I sold it for $12,500 because I had 75 accounts. So I listed my third chapter, my years of working in San Diego. And in the fourth chapter, I list making another move out of a city to a brand new city. And this time it was North San Diego County in Vista, California. That's where I decided to settle. The reason there are smaller communities up here in North County. I, I was working, I started be working in Escondido, San Marcos, Vista, Carlsbad, and Oceanside. So in the, in the beginning of 1985, moved that up to Vista, bought a house, and by this time, my wife and I had four kids. So I decided, after my college degree, to build up the gardening business even more. So I went from 50 to 60 accounts up to 75, 80 accounts. Again, starting out from scratch, putting that in the paper, talk to neighbors, flyers, whatever I, I could do to acquire accounts. And after one year working in North San Diego County, I couldn't believe it. I now have 75, 80 accounts. And so in my 
fourth chapter, I list my years working in North County. What happened also during this time was when you have a lot of accounts, that means a lot of referrals. And since I, I want to provide for my family and also start saving money on the side so one day that I could retire, I increased my workload from 75, 80 accounts to over 100, and even some months, I had 120 gardening accounts. So in this chapter, I list all my experiences of working in North County. In chapter six, I talk ab about acquiring and estimating accounts. It's, it's, once you get going in the gardening business, you learn the tricks of the trade. You learn how and where to find accounts. Newspapers, referrals, flyers, word of mouth, friends, even relatives. That's how you pick up gardening accounts. And if you do a good job, people will find out who you are. And estimating accounts, I list how much do you charge for accounts. Small yards, average 40 to 50 a month, weekly. Medium yards, 60, 70, 80 dollars a month. And then large yards, you charge 100, 125 dollars a month. One of the tips that I will give any gardener who wants to start a gardening business is stick with the small accounts. You'll make more money. If you acquire large y yards with acres and acres of land, with trees and shrubs and hillsides and grass, you won't make as much money. I learned in Los Angeles and San Diego and here working in Vista that the smaller yards can be done quicker and you make more money. So I talk about estimating accounts. Chapter seven, I talk about equipment. Buy the best equipment, self-propelled, Mowers will save you time. Blowers, chainsaws, weed eaters, buy the best and you will get the job done much better. Chapter eight, I talk about maintenance. How do you maintain yards? There are mowing edge yards, those are profitable. There are yards where you do bushes, you do planting, you do cleanups, you can make good money there. I talk about maintenance weekly, every two weeks, monthly. In my next chapter, I talk about customer relationships. The key to a successful landscape gardening business and the best tip that I will give anybody who asks me for advice is, you gotta have a good customer relationship with your accounts. You've got to give the people you are working for confidence that you're an honest person, that you will take care of their yard, that you'll do a good job. You won't steal from them and you won't break things on their property. That's what I found out on how, how to be successful. Have a relationship with your customers. Greet them, talk to them about their family. They'll like you and they'll keep you on month after month. So in this chapter, I talk about customer relationships. Chapter 10, I talk about efficiency with profit. How can you be efficient on a job? Well, you have good equipment, and then you know how to do the job properly, how to mow, how to trim the edges, how to trim bushes, how to clean up the yard in a good amount of time, not spending hours and hours and hours and wasting time. I talk about efficiency. If you're efficient, you'll be profitable. Chapter 11, I talk about people stories. You, there are the good people, there are average people, and obviously there are bad people that you work for. I call them gold customers, silver customers, and bronze customers. Most of my customers are gold and silver. Very few are bronze where they give you problems. Gold customers pay on time. Gold cu customers compliment you. Silver customers are average people. You hardly ever see them, but they, they keep you and they pay you. And obviously the bronze customers are those who cheat you and don't pay you and they complain all the time. Very few customers.